everyone, Cheryl Fine here. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how to take this coffee table and turn it into bench seating. So I have gotten this inspiration on how to do this um, and what I wanted to do on this from a pillow I had in my room. And it was this like furry pillow here. I just love it. It's just so fun. And I just love the fabric on it. So I was thinking I was gonna put this on a chair of mine and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool just to have a bench seating at the end of my bed so I can just sit there and maybe, you know, put on my shoes or whatever while I'm getting dressed. And I wanted to put this fur on top of it. So that's where my inspiration came from. And um, so, but then I had to go find a coffee table. I had to find something that was high enough to put at the end of the bed, something that was constructed in such a way that I could, you know, apply the foam on here and the fur on here and do some kind of fun extra things to it. And I'll show you that as the video goes along, some other fun things we're gonna do. So I picked up this one here on a website called Offer Up. I don't know if you guys have that um, app on your phone where you live, but you might want to go check it out. I found this on there for $20. Um, I love getting cheap stuff, as you know, because if you buy things that are a little too expensive, then you're not going to get your money worth, you know, your money's worth out of it when you try and sell it. In this case, I think I might just keep this. So I was looking for something that just had a nice flat top to it that was durable and sturdy. And I also wanted to make sure that it had straight legs in here. So if you could see the corners, because I'm gonna apply some hardware in there and it needed to be that L shaped, okay? I found another table that I absolutely loved too, but it had those claw feet on it and had a kind of a curved leg. So it wasn't gonna allow me to add those extra elements to the table to make it look really cool. So I ended up buying this one for $20, as I said, and it was just perfect because if you could see, I can just put my foam here on top and then they have this little lip underneath here and that's where I'm going to attach the fabric later. And I'll show you how I do that as I move along. So this is perfect because all I'm going to do to this table is paint the bottom half like this piece here and then the legs. And then I'm going to um, apply my foam on top. I'm going to show you a little trick with that and then the fur on top of that. Then we're gonna add some nice hardware to the legs just to kind of bump it up some and make it a lot of fun. So stay tuned, we're gonna go work through this one step at a time and I'll show you exactly where I got everything. I'll, I'll share the links with you so you don't have to go searching around like I did like a crazy person and you'll be able to just order what you need, okay? So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, let's get started. So our very first step is the prep. And if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you're gonna know that I'm really big on the prep because if you skip the prep, it can mess up your whole job. And in this case, we have very little prep, so we can get this done pretty quickly, okay? So the very first thing we're gonna do is sand the areas that we're gonna paint. We're gonna use Stix Primer. I love Stix Primer, I use it all the time. This particular primer is tinted. It doesn't have to be tinted. I'm just using it because I have it. And I don't want to have to you know, keep buying more products. We so want to save money. So we're going to use a primer. We're going to need sandpaper. This is about 150 grit sandpaper we're going to need. And I'm going to paint the uh, legs in this piece in here with metallic. And I'm using the Modern Masters metallic. And I'm going to use two different colors. Our base is going to be this um, old bronze. So we're going to put that on first. And then I'm going to go over it. And I'm just going to striate it a little bit and show you how to kind of antique it with this wheat color to kind of give it some depth and kind of give it a metal look, okay? We're also going to need gloves because you don't want to get primer in your hands, it's hard to get off. And brushes are important as well. So we're going to need some brushes. I love these brushes. I have them on my website if you'd like to uh, take a look at these. This one here is a square brush, which is easy to do legs with. You can also use a round brush as well. So I'm going to go ahead and probably use a square brush so I can show you how that works. So the, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to sand. We're going to scuff it up a little bit, just a little bit, because we just want to give it enough to, when we prime it, it will, you know, the paint will stick to it, okay? So let me just walk around here and show you that. This is so simple. We're just going to take the sandpaper and we're going to lightly scuff it up. See how quick and easy that is? I'm going to go all the way and do all the legs. I've already done these. We're just going to go in here and do the legs. It takes literally five minutes to do this. After you're done with that, you want to take a damp rag and you want to clean off that dust. 
because you don't want to have that in your paint. So wipe it down real quick. Very simple. And this is all we're going to do on this table. This table here, we're just going to do this piece here and the legs. This is all going to be covered with the fur, so we don't even have to worry about that. It'll save us a lot of time, okay? So we're going to wipe that off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to prime it. So we're going to use this. Just put it on there, one coat, and then just let it dry. And then we can go and start with the uh, metallic. Watch this. I'm not even going to worry about if it gets underneath here. None of that's going to be seen. Just get it on there. That's it. See how easy that is? Quick and easy. But this is important. And it doesn't have to look pretty. It's just primer and it's going to be covered. See how nicely this brush goes on? It's nice and soft and it puts it on really smooth. It lays it on there really nicely. So we're just going to continue all around the edges here, get our primer on. We'll let that dry and then we'll use metallic. Now let me just say this, if you want to use a chalk paint on here or any other kind of paint, that's fine too. Just use a regular paint on here. I like advanced um, products because it dries really hard. But if you want to use a chalk paint so you don't have to sand and prime it, uh, that's fine too. It's whatever design or whatever, you know, color that you're, you're wanting to work with. This particular one, I kind of want the legs to look, have that kind of a metal look. So I'm going to have to go through the steps. If you want to do it the lazy way, use chalk paint. And you guys all know I have a powder adhesive that you can put into regular paint and make your own chalk paint save a lot of money. So you might want to go on to the website and take a look at that, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go around here. I'm just going to go ahead and paint this out and then we'll go on to the next step. Hey, before we get started, I just wanted to point something out. In the beginning of the video, I was telling you to wear gloves because it's really hard to get primer off. And as you can see, I did not use my gloves and I have primer all over my hands now. But there is um, a quick fix to that, and I'm gonna show you how you can get that off. Just get some of these little scrubby things. I get them at the dollar store, and you can just use soap and water and scrub it off. It will come off with one of these. And I actually leave one of these in my shower, believe it or not, because I get paint all over me when I'm painting. Sometimes I'll have it on my arms, and I'll just take and scrub it off while I'm in the shower. So just a little quick note, you might wanna get some of these. So now on to our next step, we're going to go ahead and put our first coat of um, the metallic on here. And this is the old bronze from Modern Masters. And we're going to use the uh, square brush again. And what I'm going to tell you too is uh, it's important to pour your product into a bowl. You don't want to work right out of your container because it will contaminate your paint. So just pour a little bit into a little bowl and use it that way, save your paint because this stuff is not cheap. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paint it on just like you paint anything else on. Just put it on there. The first coat is not gonna be pretty. I'm just here to tell you, it's gonna take two, sometimes three coats of paint. You're working with metallic and it kind of has a tendency to like make streaks and what have you. So just get it on there, try and put it on and drag it through like that and just continue to do that. Now, as each coat dries, you can add another coat. Wait till it dries, because all you're gonna do is pull the paint right back out. So get it on there, just paint it on. I like to get it on there and then just drag it all the way through so I have a nice straight strie type line. And that'll give it more of a metal look too, because I'm trying to get that kind of an industrial, contemporary look to this. So this is why we're applying this first. And I'm just going to go ahead and start here and just put it out in the legs. So just get it on there and then drag it through. That's all you got to do. And get up underneath here too. So you're just going to keep applying this until you cover the whole piece. Very simple, very easy. There's just a couple of tricks to getting the metallic on there the right way. See, I'm just going to put it on and I'm just going to drag it up and I'll continue around the entire piece. 
And make sure your primer is dry too, because if it's not dry, you're going to pull the primer through and then you're going to see that under the color come out. So what I do a lot of times is I take a fan and put it on there to dry it faster, but primer does dry pretty quickly. But if you want to speed up the process, just throw a fan on there. I do it all the time. So we're just going to keep doing this all the way through the whole project. Make sure you get up underneath. And there you go. So you can almost see that. I don't know if you can see it in there, but you can see how it has that metal strie kind of look to it. We're going to continue on. I'm going to put two, maybe three coats on this. I'll let you know when I get done. And then we'll go on and we'll put the wheat over top of that, okay? And that's all you have to do. It's easy peasy. Okay, so now we're back and we're going to do the next step on this. But I wanted to correct uh, myself on this. I think in the last part of the video I said we are using a Modern Masters product. It's actually a faux effects product. I was just looking at it and I, I'm so sorry that I uh, said that. This is a faux effects um, Old Masters metallic paint that we put on here first. And I put three coats of this on the table. Um, so it's already dry. The next step we're going to do is we're going to use the faux effects metal glow wheat and the reason why I'm going to do this is because I want to have some some depth going on in this so I'm going to take uh, a chip brush just a regular chip brush and the reason why I'm using a chip brush is because I want kind of that strie look so I'm just going to put a teeny bit on here I'm going to brush it out onto a plate just to, so it's not so heavy and we're just going to literally just brush it on very lightly okay so watch this we're just going to go like this and bring it across very lightly and that'll give it a nice strie. If you happen to get too much on there, don't worry about it. You can always take a clean brush and just kind of go in there and feather it out. Brush right over it. And see what else all I'm doing is I'm feathering back over that and brushing it out. And we're gonna take and keep doing that across the whole table. See how little bit of paint I'm gonna use on there? Very, very little. So you don't really have to buy a whole quart of this. You can buy the smaller um, portions of it. I always buy the quart because I use a lot of this product. So I'm going to take it again and I'm just going to go down the leg and up the leg. Just kind of go back and forth very lightly just to get enough on there to give it another color. And then we're going to continue that all the way around the whole table. This is going to take all of five minutes to do. So that, I'm going to take this brush because it got a little heavy on top here. Just want to feather that out. Look at how pretty that looks. So just do that around your whole table. This will give it a really beautiful finish. It'll give it that, you know, kind of that um, industrial look, per se. And um, once that dries, we're going to go into the next step, and I'm going to show you how to apply the um, foam and the fur. Okay? So we'll see you soon. Okay, now that the uh, legs have dried with our metallic paint, we're going to go on to the next step, which is going to be upholstering the top of this um, coffee table. But before we get started, I want to go over some products and tools that you're going to need and what I'm going to be using in this particular video. So we're going to go over the foam, we're going to go over the fur and what we're going to use, and some of the products and the tools that you're going to need to do this process, okay? So let's talk about the foam first, okay? So let's put this down. Now here's the foam I'm going to use, and I'm telling you, I'll tell you why I'm going to use this. Um, I bought this at Goodwill for 99 cents for each piece. I got like three pieces. I bought this a while ago. I just threw it in my studio because I knew that one day I would probably use it, and today happens to be the day. Now you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You can actually buy rolls of foam, and you can go to like a Joanne's Fabric or any kind of a craft store like that, and they'll sell rolls of it. Typically though, it's only about an inch thick. And this is here is four inches thick, so I wanted mine to be nice and thick and fluffy. If you were going to use the one inch, I would suggest you layer it twice because one inch really doesn't do a whole lot, okay? But you can do it either way. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to salvage this foam that I got for 99 cents. Now, as you can see, it's too big for the table. So what I did was I just lined it up in the back and at the end here, and I'm just going to take uh, a marker, and I'm going to take and just run it across here so I have my cut line, okay? Now you're gonna laugh when I show you this, but I was trying to figure out how to cut this, and what I, what I found that works the best is, believe it or not, an electric knife. 
You know the electric knives you use for like Thanksgiving to cut your turkey? That would be perfect to use. The one I got was actually in the sporting goods sections of Walmart because they didn't actually have an electric knife in Walmart, believe it or not. I mean, I was shocked, but um, that's what I'm gonna use on this. So here's my cut line. And here is the electric knife. Now this is a electric fisherman's electric knife. I guess they use this to scale fish or something. I don't know. I don't fish, um, I fish at the grocery store. So we're gonna use this and we're gonna cut the foam and it's gonna give it a nice straight line. Watch this, this is amazing. So keep one of these on here. This is like $20 at Walmart. So here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get it done. And I'm just cutting right through, slowly, on my line. How perfect is that? Look at this. Pull that piece off. Look at how nice and straight that came out. So the great thing about this is, I have three pieces, but I'm only going to have to use two. So I'm going to put one here. Which way did that go now? It went this way. And then I had another one. Hold on a sec. And here's my other little piece. And I'm going to place that right here. Now, as you can see on this table, there's a little part missing right here. Hopefully you can see this end piece. This is perfect. This little piece here is going to fit nicely on there. I'm just going to cut it to fit. There might be a little bit of an overlap there, but I'm not worried about that because once I stretch the fabric, it'll pull it down. It'll be nice. So I'm going to take this piece, get that fuzzy stuff off. I'm going to cut this. And then I'm going to use this piece. And then we're going to use this piece at the end. And look at that. Lo and behold, $2. And I've got a four inch cushion on the top of this um, table, which is going to be perfect. Now, so now that we have that on there, the next step we're going to do is we're going to spray um, an Elmer's glue adhesive on there so that the um, foam will stick to it and won't slide all over the place. Okay? So we're just going to take this off. Take them off. Lay them down. I would shake this up at least a little bit you know, before you get going on it. And we're just going to spray the top of this. Remember, we didn't prime, prep, or do anything to this because it wasn't necessary. It's all going to get covered up, so don't waste your time with that. Just go ahead and spray your adhesive on here. That's it. And go over it this way, maybe, and then the other way. Just keep, you know, be generous. Okay. Now I'm going to spray a little on the cushion too. I don't know why. I'm just doing that. Hopefully it'll be enough. Then you're going to stick that on there. Boy, it really does stick well, let me tell you. So this piece, how did that go? That went that way? Okay. Now you can see that this cushion has junk all over it from Goodwill. I really don't care because I'm covering it up anyway. I'm going to spray a little on here. I'm going to lay that on there. And we are just going to let that set up for a minute and stick. Like you see that little lip there? I don't think I'm going to worry about that too much. I guess I could. Let me see something. I guess I could have cut that a little bit and put it on there. I'm not going to worry about it because I think once I stretch the fabric on there, it'll be just fine. So don't worry about that. Let's talk about the fur. Now this fur here, this is actually a blanket and I bought it at Target. Now it was a little pricey, but I got to tell you, I love the fur. It's like not that cheapy fur that you get like, you know, in the rolls. Now I did go to the fabric store and found some, but I didn't love it. And this I loved. So this whole blanket was $35. When I went into, uh, I think it was Joanne Fabrics, I had some on the roll, but it was that cheap fake fur. And I just didn't like it, even though it was a little teeny bit cheaper. I decided to go ahead and get this. So what I'm going to do, this is perfect, by the way, because look. 
it'll actually fit on here quite nicely. I figured this out before. Once I stretch it on here and staple it underneath, it's going to be perfect. But before I actually do that, there is a liner in this um, blanket. I'm going to cut this out because I don't want this on it because I think it's going to move around a little bit and it just gives it, it's extra thick. So when I go to staple it, it's just going to be more fabric for me to have to staple through. So I'm going to cut this lining out and then I'm going to take and apply this to the table. So we'll do that in a second as soon as I cut this out. And um, that's it. We'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, now we're ready to do the upholstering on the table. Let me just point out a couple things, okay? One, I did not cut the blanket. I didn't want to cut the blanket because I don't need it to come up short and then I can't add fabric onto it, but I can't cut off. So do not cut the fabric or the, um, the whatever you buy, the fur. Just lay it down on the table. Take your coffee table, lay it upside down on top, okay? So what we're gonna do first is on this side here, as you notice there's a lip here. So this coffee table was perfect for what I'm trying to achieve here and make a bench out of it. Because of this lip here, I can now uh, attach the fur right underneath there and you'll never see it. So it's perfect. So if you can find something like this, it's the best um, you know, piece of furniture you're gonna find to suit your purpose. So I had put this all on there. I made sure that the fabric is going to meet up in here on this side and that side. These two sides we'll do later and I'll show you what to do when you get to that point. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need a, and I'll tell you right now, it's um, electric staple gun is the best thing to use. If you have a hand one, your hand's gonna be killing at the end. So you might wanna go purchase one. They're not that expensive. You can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's and it just ch -ch 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 all the way through. So we're gonna take the fabric or the fur and we're gonna start in the middle. So what, the reason why I'm starting in the middle is because I wanna work to the right and to the left so it comes out evenly, okay? So we're just gonna take this, lay it right in there, staple it down. And then you're just gonna do that every couple inches. You can go back in and fill in later and add some more staples. See how I'm doing this? Just you know, tug it a little bit if you have to. Just go to the edge, right about there, and then work your way down to the other side. It's pretty simple to do. It's not that hard. And listen, if you mess up and it didn't go through, just take a little pair of pliers and pop the, you know, the screw, um, the metal out, or the staple out. So I'm just going to tug it and just get it in place. My first goal is just to get this in place first. I want to pull it right back here. Be careful you don't do your fingers. That really hurts. And I'm going to show you something really cool I'm going to do with the sides too. Because normally I would tuck them in or I would cut and kind of upholster them so they're nice and neat. I think these I'm just going to leave laying, hanging because it looks really neat. So now what I'm going to do is go back in here. I can add these later too if I want. Add a couple more just to keep it in place so it doesn't move around on me. There you go. It's pretty simple. So now we're going to do the other end. And then I'm going to just take this, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm, not, I'm only going to go to the edge here. Actually, let me do one more. Start in the middle, pull it taunt. and then do one at the end here. Whoop, missed that one. Okay, there we go. Get it in there. Oh, see, the, oh, I think I've run out of staples. Maybe not. This might be a little thick in here where I cut the um, lining out, so I might have to really get it in there. There we go. I might just have to hold it down a little bit. Pull that up. I'm going to keep doing this until I get it done. Sometimes it just takes two hands to do this. 
press it down. See how that little lip underneath there works out perfectly? Now, I mean, if I didn't have that lip, I probably would have went to here and did it, or underneath here, and then laid it out, you just would have had to use more fabric. But see how this piece hangs right here? Typically, you could cut that and tuck it in, or you could fold it over and do it like this. I wanted to see what it looks like hanging. I may fix it later, but I just want to see what it looks like hanging. So now that we got these two sides done, I'm going to flip this around, and then I'm going to show you how to do the other side, and then how to cut it, okay? Be right back. Okay, so now what we're going to do on this side is, as you can see, I did not cut the fabric. It's got a whole big piece on here. What we're going to do here is we're just going to lay this over evenly, okay? Get my staple gun. And what we're going to do is find that lip. And we're just going to pull this little snug. I'm going to find that lip in there, put your finger in there, and we're just going to add a staple in there um, once you get that nice and snug. You're going to keep doing this all the way around. You want to leave the fabric on, we'll cut that later. I think we might even have enough to make a little pillow out of it would be really cool. So I felt my, I have my finger on the lip of that. And I'm going to just keep pulling it snug. Find my spot. And add a staple. And here we go. that nice and tight okay keep doing this all the way around you get on this side if I can do it on my left I'm a righty so I don't know if I can do it this way but I will try never shoot the gun with your fingers in the way you need to move your fingers I'm telling you it really hurts when you Staple your finger. Okay, I'm pulling this taunt. Put my finger there where the lip is. And there's another one. There we go. So then, I'm going to do this side. Same thing. I'm going to pull it taunt. And then I'm going to put my hand work in the middle, my fingers, and staple. Staple. I'm going to add another staple here where I missed. And you can see underneath too, so you can, you'll know where to go. You need to add one. that I have the whole thing in place. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go add staples all the way around, whole bunches of them, just to keep it so that it's nice and tight. And when someone sits on here, it does not come off. So just add a ton of staples in here. You're not going to see them without the fur anyway. And then I'll show you how to cut it. And that's it. We're just going to go around the whole thing. And then I'll show you how to cut it. Okay, now that I have stapled all of the fur onto the table, now what I'm going to do is cut the excess um, fur off of here. So all I'm going to do is take a pair of scissors, and I want to cut right along the edge here. So you can see it's all stapled on there nicely. And I'm just going to cut here. And I'm not going to cut right down to the staples, but I'm going to cut close to the edge, okay? Just cut off all that excess. All the way down to the end. No one's going to see this anyway because this will be underneath. And I'm going to show you what I did to the sides of this, okay? Of the corners. 
corners actually. There we go. So I cut all this off. And this is what I've got left. This actually will make a couple of really nice little pillows. So you can actually just, you know, sew those up and stuff them up and have some nice pillows for your chair as well. Now, let me show you what I did on the corners here. I was thinking about leaving them overlap, like when hanging down. I decided not to do that because it just didn't look finished. Cut that piece off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the corner here, cut a little piece off in the corner like that, and I'm going to take and just staple this to that leg. See that? I'm just going to take and staple it right in there. Cut a little more of this off so it's not so thick. Because if it's too thick, it's hard for the staples to get through there. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay, how do we do that? Hold on. Down. Staple that. And I'm going to fold this up and then staple that right to the corners, okay? As you can see, I have a new staple gun that's not working as well as my other one. I had to run back to Home Depot and buy one because my other one, I dropped it and broke it. So off to the store, I went to buy a new one. This is called Arrow. And evidently, it has a laser in it. So if it's too thick, it won't staple. So you got to keep doing that. There we go. Seems to be but you get the idea. See what I'm doing? I'm just stapling it to the leg. I don't know why it does that. Hold on. Go figure, right? Always when you're on camera. There we go. And I'm going to do that to all four legs. I'm just going to take it up. And here's what I'm going to do on the edge. I'm cutting this piece off straight across like that, just so it fits better. So I don't want it way down on the leg. I just want it. I want it kind of even with this piece here. So I just cut off that excess piece. And then I'm just going to take and staple that down again, hopefully. See there? And you won't ever see it with all this fur anyway if you don't get it exact. And I'm just going to keep doing that. Wow. This one might be going back too. I don't like this one as much as the other one. I mean, it is working. It's just not working as fast for me. So let's see what this baby looks like. I'm going to turn it over. Okay, let's turn this over and see what it looks like. Look at how pretty this chair is. Oh my gosh, this is all from a coffee table. I mean, it's amazing what you can do with, you know, just some remnant and some old furniture that you find in a thrift store or in a garage sale, something like this would have normally been just thrown away, but it turned into a really nice little chair. 
Um, I'm thinking about having this at the end of the bed, which would be really pretty and make those pillows for on top of the bed. So this is what you got, isn't it beautiful? I'd love to see what you do as well. So if there's something you want to do that you want to show us, I'd love to see it on Ask Cheryl Farm. Please post your before and after pictures so we can see all the amazing things that you do as well. Now we have one more little step on here, one more little feature. I'm going to put, add some elements to this to kind of bump it up a little bit more, make it a little more fun. And we're going to take decorative L brackets and we're going to put them right here on each corner of this chair. So um, stay tuned and I'm going to come back and show you how to get that done, okay? See you soon. Hey everyone, we're back with the very last step of our coffee table makeover. And in this step, what I want to do is show you how to add a little, another design element to your project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these really pretty L brackets. They're decorative L brackets that I bought um, online. And let me just tell you a little bit about these. I bought um, some in Home Depot and they run anywhere from six to $10 a piece. I bought these for $2.50 each. So you don't want to spend a ton of money because if I would have bought the $10 ones, that would have been $80 just in the hardware in this chair. So I wanted to keep my cost down and I wanted to make it a little more decorative. So I found these really cute L brackets and I'm going to show you how to apply them. As you can see, I've already put them on this side here and they're super easy to do. All you have to do is take your L bracket, line it up, and I'll do it over here first so I can show you. Line it up to the edge here and they fit in there perfectly. So when you're ordering these as well, make sure that they're gonna fit in the area that you're trying to apply it to. The first ones I bought didn't work out, so I had to send those back and order some more because I didn't think to measure them. I just thought they were all kind of the same and they were not. So um, I ended up getting these and I just thought, these are perfect because they're white, they go with the fur, and I didn't really have to do anything to these, so that's a bonus in itself. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just lining that up. I'm just gonna screw these in. I just got a little screw. I think these are half inch screws, and I'm just gonna hold this in place, and I'm just gonna screw this in, and then screw another one in over here, and that's it. Watch this. See how easy that was? So then I'm gonna do is put the other one over here. Now in this one here, I noticed that this side is shorter and this side is longer, so I wanna make sure they're all uniform and I do it the right way, so I'm making the long side go up the leg. So I'm gonna add this one in here. You probably can't see me, because I'm on the other side of the leg, but I'm just gonna screw these right in. Super duper easy, just make sure they're lined up. Now there's what, four screws and holes in here, but I'm only gonna use two. It's not like it's holding it in place anyway, it's more for decorative purposes than anything. Look how easy this is. So make sure when you're buying a table as well, make sure that the legs are straight like this and you can put the yellow brackets in, because some of the coffee tables have those curved legs and they just wouldn't be conducive to that. So if you want to do the uh, decorative L brackets, you got to make sure that it's going to fit in that spot, okay? So now I'm going to put this one in. Doesn't get easier than that, huh? Okay, there we go. i got one more. And then I'm going to show you something else I'm doing to this. Put this one on. I'm lining this up just so it's even to the outer edge. I'm just going to hold it there for a sec. Oops. Got to hold the screw in there too. That would help. Evidently, these are not magnetic. Get the last one in. took all of one minute. Not a bad project. There we go. So now the last thing I want to show you Tim is on these um, L brackets when I screw these in the screws are silver and this is white so I don't want that to show. So I'm going to do something really super easy. I'm just going to take a little bit of paint and a paintbrush. I'm going to dab paint on those screws. That's it. Just to hide it because I don't want the silver showing. And the nice thing about these uh, L brackets I got they're a little distressed too. So I didn't have to do much to them. But say you buy an L bracket and you like the design but you don't like the color, 
You can always spray paint it with um, Rust-Oleum metal spray paints, and this, they come in a, a variety of colors. So just you know, keep that in mind as well. This I just got lucky with this. I found these, and they were just perfect for this table. So here, let me move this paint out of the way, and I'll be right back. I'm going to flip it over to show you what it looks like. There we go. Okay, let's flip it over. It's a little heavy for me, but bear with me here. I'm going to put my muscles in the practice here. There you go. Look at how cute that is. See the edges, how cute the, the corners are with the L brackets on. You get this nice fluffy fur. Now, remember in the beginning of the video, I used a um, blanket that I bought in the store and I cut the lining out and I used it on top of here. It was a bunch of leftover fabric. Well, enough to actually make two pillows. So look what I made. I made an actual little pillow, two of these actually, with the leftover fabric. I just sewed the edges together, left a little hole, and stuffed it with some polyfill. And that's all I did. So I got a couple of pillows out of my project as well. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. I hope you uh, enjoyed your, your adventure with me in, in, in making one of these. I hope that uh, you will share your project with us on our Facebook page. You can either go to Ask Cheryl Fun. Facebook group page, or if you're in the um, membership, then you'll go to the PYOP club. Love to see your project, and thank you so much for joining me.